Chapter 12, Nested and Dynamic Routes. Look at this, two Jessies. Um, I was having issues, I just kept typing this out and I didn't want to do multiple takes. So I'm gonna have you typing over there and talking right here. So this uh, chapter, we are going to be covering nested and dynamic routes, and this is to be covering our products. We are now creating a variable to put our ver products in. It's just gonna be an empty objects at first. And then we're creating this database function to go and fetch the products from a database, which is just gonna be a JSON file in our public folder that we just created up there. But it's not gonna be anything too exciting. It's just two silly little products in an array of objects uh, in an object and that is what the data is so the data is going to return an object with a some products and then we're going to make this function the get products function to go and find those objects and then we are going to um, take the objects and we're checking to see if there is any length in the object at first to see if we have filled this object already and then we can just return those products because we know we're all, always going to have the same two products if we wanted to check the uh, amount that we had in in stock or anything we would be able to would run around this every time we purchased or something but we're not worried about that we just want to await the database because as you we know asynchronous functions always need to await something um, and then um, the we just return the products so I'm just gonna go back through here and show you that we have the that we need to make some new routes so our new routes are going to need to make some new inner HTML. So you see how we repeat that every time? I just want to simplify this and show that these are just gonna be pairing together a path and a component. It's just gonna be an array with these objects in it, which are gonna contain a path and a component pair. And so the first part's path, second part's component, and we haven't created these yet. We're about to create them in just a moment. I'm just doing this a little bit out of order because I argued with myself about the best order, but I figured it'd be best to get this out of the way at first. So as you can see, we're just gonna be creating the uh, path and creating the, pro the component that is going to go to it. And there's just gonna be a few, one for all of the products, one for each product. And then lastly, we're gonna have this cart component. This cart component is gonna be just a little bit different because we're not gonna finish creating it in this chapter because that's gonna wait until we do the local storage chapter because we're already doing quite a bit of markup in this chapter. So we're just gonna do the same thing, but we're just gonna run this render function, which is gonna just be doing that main inner HTML um, thing that we were doing earlier. Um, I believe that we're about to make that right now, actually. So here's gonna be the render function. And render function is just going to take in a component as an argument. You saw how we just took, a, just find all of those uh, components that are going to be going to each route. And then we're just going to replace the inner HTML with that component. And then we're going to run this link finder function, which is right below here. So we just need to turn this into a repeatable function that we can keep doing. But the problem is, if we define the links at the very beginning, every time we change routes, it's not gonna be looking for them anymore. It thinks it's already found all the links. So we need to take this and we need to move it down inside of the function so that every time it runs, it finds a new variable for us. So now that we have it all together inside of a function, we are going to go back and we are going to actually define our components. As you can see, we need to define some static components first. So we're gonna be doing home and about first. And the way that that works is that we are just going to be creating a function just like we did for the cart and everything else before. But now that we have the render function, we don't need to worry about that. We just are going to be creating the title and then we put a template to be run inside of that uh, function. And the template is going to just be saying, hey, this is a real shop. Look, we've even got a picture. <laughs> and then, oh, if I can ever type it correctly, we go underneath and we put in the source. And the uh, source of this picture, I'm going to put right over here in a moment. And that will be tell you where I got this silly picture of a maybe not actually open shop front, <laughs> but it uh, was uh, the picture I chose. Next, we're going to make our other static component, which is just going to be the about page. This is just going to change the title once again to about. 
the title of the page, and then we're going to run the render function again. And this one's just going to be a paragraph with some text. And this text is not going to say much, it's just going to say, hey, it's the about page. And so after that, we need to make a repeatable component to put for both our products page and our product page. And this is going to take in a product as an argument. And for that product, it's going to make a little template for each product. And as you can see, I misspelled return there. That's going to be an issue later. You'll see me fix it at the end. Don't worry. I'm going to be wondering why it doesn't work and run into that line. Um, and so we just make a div for each product. And inside of the div, the first thing we're going to do is a link to the products page. And I'm not sure if this is supposed to, why this doesn't need to be a string necessarily, but it's, it works just like this, where I put in the template. And then I want to make sure that's an internal link, because I don't want to dest destroy the DOM and lose our state. And then I'm going to find the image from inside of the product. And I want to make an alt text for that. Every image should have alt text. This time I'm just using the name of the product. Then we close our, oh, we need to make the, uh, close the image, yep. And then make the title of the product, which is an H2 tag, because there's already going to be a t title of the page above it from the component. And then we close our link. Next we need to, and this is me getting annoyed and not, about not having Copilot because Copilot would have guessed this by now, but Copilot kept guessing the wrong thing. So this is why I ended up doing this like this because I'd done like two takes with Copilot guessing the wrong thing and I got really annoyed. But as you can see, we're just making the description and the price. And then here I remember that I want to put a dollar sign in front of price at the last second. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, let's go back there, why not? Um, and then I am going to put a button here. Now, every, we're not going to worry about the button functionality in this chapter because we've already done enough in this chapter. But that this is going to be the button where it has the product's ID to make sure that we add the right product to the cart. And then we close the button out. And that's going to be the product component. So next we make a products page with these product components. And the way that that works is we don't even need to take them in as in a, as an argument because it's going to be taking all of our products in. And so the way that we do is we just change the title like we did for the static pages. But because this, this is going to be asynchronous because we are going to need to wait on this. Um, yeah, I don't think that needs to be constant, buddy. Uh, we already defined it, didn't we? Yeah, getting there. And there I remember that I had already defined it. So <laughs> we take the products and we await the get products function to define it. Because remember, it returns products at the end and it defines it. And then so we put the products HTML as an object. Um, we, we, we are taking the values out of the object. And then we're mapping through them. We're finding each product. And we want to e render the product component with each one of those products. And then we want to join it together with an empty string because we don't want anything in between it. We could do something like, you know, a blank, like a, a line or something like that. But then we just render the product HTML. And then we want to do a product component for each product. A product page, rather, which takes in the ID. And then we are going to, by this point, we should have the products cached in the um, final demo I have it say that oh the products are already cached we don't have to worry about this and then um, we just are defining the product by looking through the products and making sure that the ID matches the number um, the which is going to be um, we're going to be defining that by the URL that's coming in um, and it's just the last part of the path name. That's how we're doing the dynamic route here. We're not worrying about it too much. We just know it's going to be a string that we're going to turn into a number. We don't have to worry about it beyond that. And then we, do, we change the page name, just like we have every other time, to the product's name this time. And here, this is something that's going to give me an issue because I haven't been worrying about the search yet. So I try to change the search value ahead of time to the product's name. Um, you'll see, I fixed that at the end. 
And then this just renders the product. And if not, we render the 404 page. Um, we uh, It's just double coverage on the 404 page. I was having some weird edge cases where it didn't find it, like pretended it found the product, but then didn't render the 404. I don't, I, I don't know what that was. So now we're gonna do the 404 page. The 404 page is just going to be checking to see if it does have that ID argument, and it has the ID argument. That means that it was trying to render a dynamic route, but it didn't find the ID. And so the way that that's going to work is it's just going to be a 404 page saying we don't have that product. So first we just make a 404 page saying we don't have that product. And then afterwards we want a more generalized 404 page. That's just, if it's any other website, that's not going to be our dynamic route. Um, any other page that's not our dynamic route, that's not listed in our routes configuration. We want to make sure that we t cover all of those edge cases. So we just want to make sure that every other time that this nope function is run, we are going to be doing a 404 page that is saying, hey, you're at this path. Why are you here? You're not supposed to be here. And like our internal links don't lead there. You're just fishing around. And so that is that. That's our 404. So last but not least, we are going to be wanting to change our router function. And I just completely demolish it. And we start anew. First thing we want to do is to find our dynamic route. And then once we have our dynamic route defined, we want to check the path that we are bringing in and we're gonna split it by every time we see the slash. And then that's gonna give us our entire path name. And then we're checking to see if this is this dynamic route that we just defined. So I'm not wanting to do regex. I didn't want to do regex because I don't want to confuse anybody and regex is confusing no matter what. So the idea here is that I'm just checking to see what comes in and I'm defining one dynamic route. And you could do this, you could do multiple. You could define an array of dynamic routes and then just check to see if this is listed in the dynamic routes the same way we're checking the entire routes array. It's the exact same idea. And so here we just say that, okay, there's it's gonna be an ID. That's gonna be this, the third part of a path that's coming in, you know, cause it starts from zero, zero, one, two. And then we are gonna run the product page with that ID. Otherwise, we're just going to do the same thing that we always have been, which is we're looking inside of this route's configuration, and then we're going to run the, uh, if the route.path is in there, if we have something with that path that the person is trying to bring in, the potential path, then we are going to run the component that we defined inside of it earlier. There's a component function defined for each one. Otherwise, we run that nope function, which is our 404 function. And then this is going to be pretty much it. Our products page is almost working. Everything's almost working except for products. And I'm mad. I'm like, what's going on here? What is this error? I click down here and I'm realizing it's on this line. And I'm like, what could it possibly be? Oh, I misspelled return. And then one letter later, as enraging as that may be, ta-da, the products page works. But then the product page doesn't work. And you get to see me try to figure this out. I go up to the product page and I'm like, wait, oh, the search value, that's what the issue is. So if you get rid of that, I see that it works. But I'm like, I might as well show that it works with the search value as well if you define it. So I go up and I realize that I haven't defined the global variable yet. So I go ahead and I do that. And I'm thinking that I already had it. And for some reason, I think that it's capitalized. So I go and I look for this query selector, which is going to be, oh, it's uncapitalized here. And then I make, uh, I, I can't explain myself. I wish that I could. So here we make the class and we make it capitalized. And then we're like, okay, let's scroll around for a second and get confused. And then for whatever reason, decide to go back and, okay, fine, let's capitalize it. And so now everything works. And when you load the product page, it loads up, as you can see, the product's name in the search bar. And now everything works exactly correctly, except for, so all we have left are cart, local storage, um, and the theme selection in local storage. And then, the, the, so we have to have all of our buttons working. So we're gonna be making a lot of functions in the next chapter. And then uh, after that, we just need to make our reactive search, which we already have started by making the product name put into the reactive search.